It has been flown here all the way from Beverly Hills. It arrived at midnight last night. It is its first ever Concorde appearance, and it is the one of Lancia Stratos Zero. Please give a warm round of applause for the car entered today by Philip Sarafim from Los Angeles. The Lancia Stratos Zero making its Concorde debut 48 years after it was first built. I can't even begin to think how hot it must be in there. <laughs> Go, 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 a bit further, a bit further. Philip, I'm going to suggest that you switch it off. Don't worry, we can push it afterwards. Practicality, after all, is so overrated. <laughs> Philip Sarafem with his co-driver, one or two of you may have heard of, Avril Yavin, rock star material for a rock star car. And all the way from America, arriving at midnight, the star of the Michael Jackson video, Moonwalker. The one-off car that Bertone built in the late 1960s, early 1970s. Really as just a show car, but Nuccio Bertone was convinced that this car had a future. And so what did he do? He called Lancia. He said, look, I've really got a car that you should see. Would you please receive me? and allow me to show you this car, which I think has great potential if you were to put it into production. Now, Gian Beppe Panico, Gian Beppe, dove sei? Ti ho visto, ecco. Gian Beppe Panico, Ciao. good to see you. Ciao. Ciao. Gian Beppe was Nuccio, scusa, spostiamoci di qua. Gian Beppe Panico was Nuccio Bertone's right-hand man at the time that this car was built. Gian Beppe, tell us a little bit. Nuccio Bertone kept on calling Lancia. They refused to see him. So what did you and he do? Well, we, we bought a Lancia, Strat, a Lancia Fulvia 1.6 HF, and we tried to manage uh, without saying anything to Lancia, but at the time we were uh, expert in doing mid-engine car like Lancia uh, Lamborghini Miura, Countach. So uh, Lucio Bertone and Marcello Gandini decided to use the same 1.6 uh, uh, liter engine and to put it in mid uh, in mid position like it is in this car this car in spite of its uh, uh, look and futuristic look uh, is almost 50 years old unbelievable <laughs> and tell me after you received all of these brush offs from uh, from Lancia saying we don't want to see you we get, we're not going to build your car uh, you had a you had a brainwave what did you do well, after uh, a few shows, Torino, Brussels, Amsterdam, I drove the car in Brussels uh, in, under a, a snowstorm, and they saw many of these pictures uh, all over in a magazine. So uh, Cesare Fiorio and uh, Pierugo Gobbato, they wanted to see the car. We got the car. I was driving the car with Nuccio Bertone close to me, and we went to uh, Lancia Scuderia Corse, which was at the time in Via San Paolo, and uh, when we arrived at the Scuderia San Paolo, as in all uh, factories, we have a sort of a barrier. a barrier which doesn't allow to get in. When we were there, the people like Cesare Fiorio and uh, Gobbato, they listened to the noise of the car. They came out uh, and suddenly uh, Nuccio Bertone told me, well, you can pass under the, the, the bar. So we just went uh, and uh, so that was the starting of the of the Stratos story because uh, 12 months later we displayed at Torino Motor Show in 71 the final version of the Lancia uh, Rally which uh, uh, won four years consequently the World Rally Championship with uh, Sandro Munari. So you had been rejected by Lancia who didn't want to see the car. In the end they consented to see the car. You and Nuccio Bertone drove this car through the streets of Turin. You got to the Lancia racing department, the barrier was down. Bertone said, go, go, go. You drove right underneath the barrier and uh, into the courtyard and the rest, as they say, is history. Exactly, yes. Exactly, that's, that's uh, the story, yes. And then, uh, uh, well, I, I drove this car uh, a couple of times from on the Autostrada Torino-Milano 
for uh, the camera car of uh, Quattro Ruot at the time. It was quite exciting and really unbelievable experience. I have to say this car, even in 2018, genuinely looks like something from another planet. I can only imagine in 1970 the effect that driving this car down the road must have had. And it's extraordinary that in all of these years, this is the first time the car has ever appeared in the Concorde d'Elegance. Uh, yes, in, in 1970, it was, uh, uh, we, we succeeded in going at the time you could drive the car in front of the uh, Duomo di Milano. We reached the Duomo, but because of the crowd, because of the people, because of cars, they created a, such a jam of, of people and cars that we were unable to go, to go out of that place unless uh, the helicopter of the police uh, and the Vigili Urbani di Milano. Gian Beppe Panico, grazie Gian Beppe, sei sempre gentilissimo. Grazie per essere con noi oggi. Philip Avro, you guys are going to, I have to say, as a special mention, it should be, it should be mentioned that Philip, who's a man, he doesn't, he's a man who doesn't do things by halves. He has even commissioned uh, Isaiah, the tailor, to design for him and his crew Lancia Stratos Zero suits made out of Stratos Zero fabric. Um, you want one, Simon? Um, I want two. I want one for each leg. <laughs> like a roller skate. Exactly. Right, we need to get you out of there. You're going to need a push, I believe. Can we have the service crew, please, to... Can we have the service crew to push the, cars, or the car, or indeed volunteers? Any Michael Jackson or Avril Lavigne fans? Look, they're lining up behind you. Philip, Avril, thank you. See you later on. Simon, you've got a new career beckoning once rock music, uh, if rock music ever goes out of fashion. Oh, it's good to see you too. Right, ladies and gentlemen, we have something very special for you to finish the parade this afternoon. For the first time ever at Villa d'Este, we are going to showcase Formula One, the class that we have called when sex was safe and racing was dangerous. Now, Parading this afternoon, we are going to show you seven Formula One cars.